awesome with a parrot roaming the world, uh, finding treasure, just running away from baddies. They're coming! Quick, out the back door! Capturing them at the end. Stop! There's a lot of adventure in it. For generations, children all over the world have grown up captured by the spell and the unique imagination of Enid Blyton, the most prolific children's author in the world, with over 700 titles to her impressive credit list. Of all her books, none is more loved and critically acclaimed than the legendary adventure series, the stories of Ali Mannering and her friend, secret agent, Bill Cunningham. Her children, Dinah, Philip, Jack, and Lucy Ann. And their amazing talking parrot, the inimitable Kiki. On a large ship somewhere at sea, a small boy runs from danger, a situation familiar to millions of Enid Blyton fans the world over. Now the exciting adventure stories are being brought to the screen for the first time ever in a multi-million dollar production, one of the largest and most ambitious of all time. It's okay, Jack, I'll handle this now. Run, Jack! series is the flagship, I think, of the Blyton estate, the jewel in the crown, so to speak. Surprising, perhaps, but only a few of Enid Blyton's books have ever been adapted for the screen. But now the Cloud9 Screen Entertainment Group, in association with the broadcasting conglomerate CLT Multimedia, are bringing all eight adventure novels to a worldwide television audience in an outstanding 24-part series of action and adventure to be enjoyed by the entire family. Hold it down! Philip, ah! it's no use! It's headed anyway! My tent's gone! Come on, we've got to hold hands! We've got to find a shelter! Look at the end! Excuse me, does anybody here know what tomorrow is? When we founded Cloud9, within our catalogue, we decided we wanted to target a family audience and, and looking around we thought, well, none better than Blyton, so that uh, a family audience can literally sit down from granny, from mum and dad, from, from a 19-year-old and a 5-year-old and all enjoy it. Enid Blyton wrote the adventure series over half a century ago, but the award-winning team of writers have cleverly adapted and updated the stories to appeal to a modern family audience without losing any of the original values and charm and a lot of humour too. Where in the whole wide world would the producers make the series? Where would they find the range of complex locations to bring Enid Blyton's extraordinary imaginations alive? The enterprising production team eventually found what they were searching for in New Zealand, a country renowned for its clean green image, its spectacular scenery, its breathtaking mountains, rivers and lakes. so many variations in geography within a very short radius of each other. I mean, we can be in the sea in one minute, we can be in the bush within 15, 20 minutes travel. We can be soaked to the skin at one end of the hut valley and we can be bathing in the sunshine at the other end of the valley at the same time. And which young aspiring actor wouldn't pass up the opportunity to start him? So just, you know, 
News that the Inner Blyton Adventure series was being made in New Zealand spread throughout the country like wildfire, fanned by reports in the news media and local radio stations. And like children responding to the call of the Pied Piper, they came from far and wide, often travelling through the night to display their talents. Initially, the production team was sceptical about finding four suitable candidates with the right kind of look and talent to portray Dinah, Philip, Jack and Lucienne. A mammoth search for the protagonists had already taken place throughout the UK and Europe and as far afield as Canada and Australia. And the response in New Zealand was astounding. This is a very, very big queue. This is very long, but hopefully you're all going to stay out here and keep out of the rain as much as you can. Now, if you see somebody with an umbrella, move underneath the umbrella with them. If you can, move underneath as well and try and stop every time the rain comes. And if the rain does come strong, you can, of course, move over under the trees. It's not you. And these people, don't you worry, you too will get through. It just might be a Are you reading and blighting? Are you reading and blighting? Yeah, <laughs> every day. No, we do. We read it. Oh, yeah, we read it all the time. Every day, every day, religiously. Where have you come from? Up a hut. How long do you think you're going to be waiting? Uh, hours. <laughs> During the next few days, Thousands of young hopefuls queued for hours to audition for the dream of a lifetime, not to mention that other little bonus. That's six months off school. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so where did you come from? Yeah. Carterton. Carterton, that's quite a long drive. Yeah. What time did you start off this morning? 5.30. What time did you get up? 5.30. Yeah, the road from everyone. And how did you hear about this? Well, through the drama academy that we're both going to. Yeah. She's my sister. I come from Kwangapura, which is just north of Auckland. Goodness me, and how did you come here? Have you flown down or what? Well, yes. Yes, we have. Everyone who turned up was seen and given an equal chance. A 60-second shot at stardom. I'm 13 years old and I'm number 73. Son, Hanson waited until the youth turned and looked at him. Haven't we met before? It's Sam, I yell. He always wins at everything, every time he beats me. He can even tie his shoelaces faster than me. The rifle emitted a soft pop. He's gone to her. He's gone to the White Witch. He's betrayed us all. Oh, surely? Oh, really, said Susan. He can't have done that. Can't he, said Mr Beaver, looking very hard at the three children. I've been writing since I was two. I'd really like to get the part. Thank you. And I've really got what it takes, I think. All kids are actors, and it's just really a question of finding who is most like Diana and Philip and Lucy and so forth that are in the show. I think it's been a great success. I think um, we've given uh, you know every kid an opportunity to come and read and uh, have a crack at the parts, and we will look at them, and we will sift through and see uh, if there's any other budding stars out there. And then a shortlist was drawn up. So I suppose I should say congratulations for having got this far, because you've, um, you're out of 1,200 children we've seen over the whole country. You're the final 12. Um, so you can pat yourselves on the back that you've got this far. Uh, I've done a few ads in New Zealand, and I've done the Black Stallion. That was my biggest thing. Let's have a cup of coffee. We can't. The coffee was on the ponies. Everything The lucky 12 finalists were put through their paces during a gruelling schedule rehearsing and blocking out scenes from one of the episodes. Director Peter Rose and series producer Jeff Husson working carefully and thoroughly to extract the best possible performances. I've been on Buzz a Bumble show and I did a solo in it and I've been on the news but only because I said a rude remark about my stances while the TV men were there and they said, would you do that again on live national television? And I said, OK. So you've got to stop you again. So you sort of tell all the parts. She's not going to think about it. And she thinks about it and the penny drops again. Yeah, he's right. So we will have to stop. Yeah, I mean, this is the kind of thing that you think, oh, it always happens to somebody else. And, you know, like occasionally I just wake up in the middle of the night and think, gosh, you know, this is actually me. It's quite amazing. Hans! Hans! What oh, I think... I think my mum's quite pleased with what I've done and stuff. Quite proud of, I don't know. Look, he's riding. We're on foot. You're making a very good point. What happened? He'll never find us if we start charging about in the fog. Hans! 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 What happened? 
happened? The pain is bolted! And now here's a surprise. A hidden camera has been set up to record a Kiwi kid who's never acted before, who came from the open audition and whose life is about to be changed forever. Jeff Huston speaking. Hi. Hi, do you remember who I am? I think so. <laughs> I'll let you know, I'm the producer of the Enid Blyton series. Mm -hmm. And uh, you were one of the 12 finalists out of the thousand boys and girls that we saw. Um, darling, I'm going to offer you the part uh, if you'd like to do it. Really? Yes. <laughs> oh my god, this is so cool. <laughs> I, I, the, the people in London and in Luxembourg and back in Europe were very, very impressed with what you did. And, um, you know, they think, um, they think you're going to make a fabulous contribution to the series. Oh, really? Uh, so, uh, we'll be sending you a contract, of course, and, uh, you'll get some money and per diems and and then a lot of hard work. Oh my God, this is... <laughs> Would you like to do it? Oh, I just have to think about it. Of course I'd like to do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my darling. Well, well done and congratulations indeed. Thank you. And uh, I'll get some scripts off to you and you better start learning some lines. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Okie dokie, darling. Bye. Talk to you soon. <laughs> oh, God. Uh. <laughs> I'm really thrilled Congratulations. And that is how Peter Mallon, Alexis Jackson, David Taylor and Jennifer Jewell came to meet in a photographer's studio for the very first time to play leading roles in the Enid Blyton adventure series, which was to evolve into a real life adventure the biggest adventure of their entire lives. We knew instinctively what we were looking for. A dark-haired one, a blonde one, a, you know, different heights and ages, and, and we were qu quite surprised at, at the result. We had a bit of a, I think, a bet that, that we, we literally, statistically, wouldn't be able to. We, we might be lucky finding one, and and we might have to extend that search to Australia or back to the UK, but uh, it just came together at the right time and uh, it's worked very well. My name's Peter Malik and I'm playing Philip. I'm Alexis and I play Dinah Mannering. Hi, I'm Jennifer Jill and I play Lucy Ann. Um, I'm David and I play Jack Trent. My character includes being the leader of the four. We've got to find a safe place, then come back and try. We need to leave a trail so we can find our way back. I don't want to leave Jack. We've got to, Lucienne. We can't help him now. In the group of four, she's the sister of Philip. She's the second oldest. Um, she's constantly screaming at any insect life that comes anywhere near her. She's the sort of one who, when the others are going to rush off and have adventures, she sort of says, you know, we'll wait. I'll come. I don't want to go. See you later then. Wait! You can't just leave me on my own! Wait up! Wait for me! He's very into computers. Um, he knows uh, a lot about animals and birds. There you are! What are you doing? I scanned the tuition map into my computer. The Andrea. The snake. The princess. And the piece of coastline. Now I'm putting in everything from the Shetlands to Suez, from the Satlas. And? And the computer works out if anything from the Atlas matches the shape from the tuition map. I love animals. I seem to have a special touch with animals. I can have any animal come up to me or anything and pat them and all that sort of stuff, yeah. Always going off on her own with her Walkman. Uh, she's supposed to be a little sarcastic. I think she's there sort of um, veering towards she's smart or something, you know. She knows a little about <laughs> history and things like that. He's very think-ahead type person and 
and plan and um, not see how everything goes, but work it all out before he goes into anything. She's really devoted to her brother Jack and um, unlike the other two, Philip and Dinah, who are always at each other's throats. But... <laughs> Which way? Which way? Enid Blyton mums were always typically middle-aged, plumpish, comfortable English women, always baking bread and scones and serving up lashings of lemonade, ginger beer and ice cream. But in the adventure series, Ali Mannering is a thoroughly modern woman, played by Kirsten Hughes. And I'm um, much more of a modern mum, I suppose, than the Mrs Mannering of the Enid Blyton books. You know, I have a career, I'm an artist, and I've got my own gallery, and I'm bringing up these kids on my own. It's a pity Bill can't see this. Where is he? He's got a meeting with Dennis. Dennis is the secret agent, isn't he? See Anne. Shh. I thought Bill was supposed to be on holiday. He is, but you know Bill. Yes. Kirsten's Ally is the mum we would all like. Ally is not only romantically involved with Bill Cunningham. She's adventurous. She gets involved in all the action and would do anything to protect her kids, even if that means taking on the enigmatic Sir George Houghton, the head of the Secret Service. Ali? No, Sir George. Uh, Mrs. Mannering? Yes. Right now, Bill and I are trying to rescue my children. Can you think of anything more important than that? Ali? Uh, yes, well, I understand that, my dear. No, but... I don't think you do understand, Sir George, but you're going to have to learn. Alison, give me the phone. Because Bill and I are going to get married. And he's going to have other important in his life from now on, Ali. like his wife and four children. Uh, but, and you're just going to have to learn to live with that, whether you like it or not. But, uh, and now, if you'll excuse me, I've got four young lives to save. Part of Ali's friend, Secret Agent Bill Cunningham, is played by heartthrob Malcolm Jameson. For Malcolm, the part of Bill Cunningham offered not only adventure galore, but an enormous challenge the chance to act out his own fantasies and do his own stunts. Bill Cunningham is a British Secret Service agent and um, in the James Bond tradition, if you like. So it's a great challenge to be able to, you know, play that kind of character. Um, I've always wanted to be able to do everything that I've, you know, dreamed of in the sense of uh, flying helicopters, flying aeroplanes, riding horses, you know, doing all that kind of thing. And this part gives you the opportunity to do so. Shoot it down! Exactly out of the Roger Moore uh, portrayal of, of, of Bond when Roger was playing James Bond. But, uh, uh, and if you believe this guy is, is I mean, Malcolm is in fact uh, very fit, uh, agile, he's he, an acrobat. I mean, he's done some of his own stunts, which I think uh, he's found quite certainly very challenging. The boats are moving like that, and uh, it was very exciting. I don't have time to think about being scared. You get scared afterwards, funnily enough. Sunny, hey! Enid Blyton's adventure series would not be complete without castles and dungeons, caves and secret tunnels. Enough to keep an army of designers and builders busy for months. It's not like doing 24 parts to a, a particular given theme. It's eight totally different projects which seem coincidentally to have the same four kids and the same two adults in them. But the sets are different, the storylines are different, the requirements are different, the, uh, the elements to every book are quite, quite different from the previous. 
It is actually the biggest children's series ever filmed. And uh, it, it really is. I mean, it was shooting 24 you know, episodes, eight feature films in the sense back to back. It's a mammoth logistical exercise. And these are going to be reshaped and use across the, the whole uh, eight books. Yes, yeah? that's right, that's right. Okay. We so do. how do you do that? What, I mean, are you going to sort of bend them or...? They're all on trolleys. They're just, they're just clipping together at the moment. We've got a bit of a problem with the seams, but I think it's not, a, a, not an impossible one. We can recolour the entire inside of those. We can also alter their shape. Uh, we can spread them wider. We can stand them up on end if we wanted to so that they provide... Uh, you know, a, a rock face that could be either side of the waterfall. I mean, we're working on that now, yeah. yeah. So well, I must say, I've, I've popped down the, uh, on the, um, the set and looked at them. They're, they're quite incredible, aren't they? I've never yeah. seen anything This is real. One of the earliest challenges for the production team was to recreate the children's home, Craggy Tops, which Enid Blyton had set on a clifftop in Cornwall, looking out to sea. In fact, we did find something that was a really good shape that would be a good base to start with. Maybe we can shift it on site or something like what, that. What, move a whole house? Yeah, yeah, not a problem. You're kidding me. It's easy. Oh, <laughs> what, you actually take a house from somewhere yeah. and what, put it on a lorry? Yeah. And move it? Yeah. Oh, that I've got to see. It was easy, with a bit of luck, of course. Ingenuity, a large truck, and a lot of muscle. Craggy tops appeared on the horizon from nowhere. When it's a lovely sunny day, and this just all looks fantastic. I and mean, I just think this coastline's amazing. And, and they built this house here that's fantastic. And it really does look like, and I think it looks like Cornwall. I love to stop here and look down over the house. Beautiful, isn't it? You're very lucky. Hmm, I think so. Another important element was interweaving the appropriate villains. And the adventure series is filled with them. Good baddies. Welcome. So good of you to return, and with so many new recruits. Just the right size, eh, Alex? <laughs> You're crazy. Come on. Back this way. <laughs> no, they're not going any further tonight. Bed boy. Can I go to bus? No. Watch it. <laughs> no. He's not on holiday. He's after me. He has been for years. Everything is falling into place. A few telephone calls, and the prince is ours. Good. So you have a plan? Oh, yes. Master! Master! I am going to die if you don't hurry! Run! Run! I am the guardian. I am the guardian of history. Give him the bird! No, I won't! 
More Gary, stop! Yeah. Stop! Let Kiki go, Jack! Let her go! Set. Action! No, Filming of the eight books was well underway, with four directors needed to complete the schedule. Peter Rose, Terry Marcel, Peter Sharp, and the enigmatic Michael Scott Smith. Thank you. We've cut. Put my mum more. Thank you. Be preoccupied with the bird, but everyone else, you should be looking over Eyes there. over yeah, there. I looked over there. Yeah, sort of. but you're terrified. I mean, this... Well, I want a wide shot of him dangling, a big wide shot of him dangling up and back there. In this scene from Mountain of Adventure, director of photography Wayne Vinton brings the script to life, a seemingly impossible task at times. After Wayne waved his technical wand of magical skills, a man flies through the air. Yeah, and this ecstatic cry as his, as his first starts up, yeah. Keep both hands. That's it. And... There was hardly a facility that was not used as a location by the production team. Synchronized swimmers practice, totally oblivious to the pool and waterfall that was created behind. Ah! What do you think? Unreal! So you've picked it up from the bottom and you've saved it. Swim over to the corner and turn back in time to say, my lines. Your line, which you know and I don't. 22, take two. Action! Cut! Thank you! Alexis, have you got another one in you? The adventure series is full of breathtaking action adventure. And throughout the six months of filming, no degree of time and effort was spared in getting it right. Right down to the last detail. If it doesn't stop raining in here soon, we'll get soaked. Throughout the adventures they encounter, no one is more relied upon to save them from danger than Kiki, the cockatoo, the children's constant companion, and a real star. Are you sure this thing's working properly? Of course it is. And Kiki was able to pit her wits against even the most dastardly villain. But stars find hanging round on a film set very tiring. This is my favourite one of the three. There are three cockatoos. This one's called Benny. We get on pretty well. Um, I've had the odd bite here and there, but... I was going to say, it's quite a big beak. You sort of must yes, feel like you're yes. going to take a bit of my ear for dinner. Oh, I've got to sort of... I usually put my head down like this, so... If he wants to turn round, he has to lean on me, so he won't... And what about his Got claws? I mean, they're almost talons. Do they dig into your shoulder a bit? Oh, well, one time um, we had a shot with, with um, Benny on my shoulder and he liked me so much that when the owner went to take him away, he held on with his claws and it really hurt on my shoulder. But um, I, can't, I can't feel it at all now. 
But you're really actually good friends. You're almost yes, like yeah. the boy in the book, aren't you? Yes, I am, I guess. <laughs> now, here's a useful piece of advice. If you're going to wear a parrot on your shoulder, you need protection, particularly when Goldie here, one of Kiki's stand-ins, is having an off day. Go on, go on, Goldie, go on, Goldie, go on, go on, go on, Tempa's got carried away with his line. Great to Marie. Go on, go on, go on. Good, good. Here's a weather warning. Kiki, you're daring me. With all our training with the parrots, when we set up a shot, we've got to get in between the lighting guys and get in between the actors and get in as quickly as we can and for little grabs of training because there isn't the luxury of them saying, OK, animal trainers, you may now train this particular scene. There isn't that, so we have to all shuffle politely between each other and prep as quickly as we can. Kiki found the rehearsals hectic and certainly not routine. A test for a temperamental star. But stardom never went to her head, even when she was noticed by her feathered fans. During the filming of the Enid Blyton adventure series, even Kiki must have been amazed at times at the stunts and activities that she ended up doing. Flying upstairs, defending Jack and the children from baddies, helping to unload picnics, Sliding down banisters all became a matter of routine. In this scene from Sea of Adventure, Kiki displays untapped skills as a choreographer and does her version of a traditional Māori haka. And Kiki was joined by almost every other animal in the land, which took the children by surprise at times. They found the rehearsals gruelling and often growling too. Mere foot. Foot. Mere foot. Get back. Foot. Good speak. That's good foot. Good. Um. Foot. Hey, you're hurt. Here, boy. Let me see. There. That's better, isn't it? Good dog. takes the plastic off, put him down, and then he runs off. So we need to be able to control the direction he runs off, make sure that we don't lose him. So we've trained him to run to the kennel and to the sound of the buzzer. Hold this. Careful, it's liable to bite. Don't worry, I'll be right. Don't worry, little buddy. I only want to help you. Hey, little buddy. Hello. Hello. Wow. You're all right. We've got lions. We've got geckos, which are rather sweet. And we've had a pack of wolf dogs. And we've got, um, we've had a team of ponies. And we've, of course, we've got Kiki the star, the um, parrot. We've got three to four parrots playing that role. And we've got penguins. We've got a fox. It's an education for us. I'm not looking forward, none of us are looking forward to the spiders because they're these Avondale spiders which are about eight inches across. I had to have spiders on my face for one of the scenes and it's about so big, Queen of Sheba and you know, it's a huge spider crawling across your face. Um, can't say I'd recommend it, it wasn't the best experience. Throughout the story, Alexis is scared of spiders. Now, in in reality, she's not exactly in love with them either. We had a particular sequence in the, um, in the episode I directed where we had these very large spiders. And the idea, I said, look, we could have a sort of false spider near you and we could have the real spider a bit further away. 
And she came to me, I think, on the very day of filming and said, look, I thought about this. You can put the real spider on me. They don't make sudden movements, which is, you know, quite good. They just feel really silky. You know, once you're used to it, it's more, it's more the idea of actually having something crawling on your face than it actually being on your face. In spite of the pressurised schedules, spirits were always high, both on and off the set, despite the tiring workload. But the cast were holding up well. It's tiring, but I'm really enjoying it. It's better than being at school. <laughs> I need sleep. I was really naive. I thought that it would be a lot easier than it, it you know, because it's actually quite hard work. Help! 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 Philip, who's quite an experienced actress, got that ability. He was also, as a director, particularly good at giving you expressions when you said, hey, look, show a bit of fear, um, you know, hurry the others up, drop the ad lib line in. He was very good at that. He's an inexperienced actor, and he's actually very quick on the uptake in the very best way. Uncle Bill, it's Philip. Alexis brings warmth, and she's got one magic thing. She's got an absolutely magic smile. I mean, here's this sort of, you know, she's the girl next door. That's one of the casting. Suddenly she smiles, and it's absolutely magic. <laughs> My brother used to read his, uh, her famous five and six or seven books, and then pass them down to me. So I've read a lot of her books, but I've never read the adventure series. But I've read just about all the secret seven books and famous five books. David, he's a super actor, and he has this lovely ability to make every line sound fresh and real. Very, very secure as an actor, very secure in his lines, his intonations, his whole feel is absolutely terrific. So you have this lovely confidence. Here's this actually young guy who's giving you a performance that many elder people would really say, I'd love to be able to do that. There you are. What was all that commotion about? It'd be called a stowaway. Stowaway? What's that? Pinky! Pinky! Look, one of the New Zealand relations. <laughs> Fine then, don't be friendly. Little Lucy Ann, well, she's meant to be the vulnerable person, and of course, here you've got sort of this little blonde haired girl who is, of course, much smaller than the others, and in fact, much younger, and therefore, this vulnerability shows. One of the best bits about it is screaming. <laughs> She is, I think you'll find, incredibly photogenic, so therefore, really, when you put this girl in danger, she actually rings all those bells, all those right chords. You actually feel it, sense it. It works at all the audience levels. I think the older people will look at it and they'll, they'll get that sympathy we have to have for younger people who are put in, in danger. And yet, in terms of the context of the story, this is the vulnerable person. Each of them, of course, are vulnerable. Each of them are strong at different times. But she represents that, and she, she's terrific in it. At long last, while the crew entered the post-production process, Jennifer was able to take a break from filming, and her screams became ones of excitement during a promotional tour to Europe and Disneyland, where she was introduced to another legend, in addition to Enid Blyton, none other than Mickey Mouse. Malcolm Jameson also shared Jennifer's enthusiasm for escapism. I don't think too many people would disagree that violence has gone to perhaps the furthest limit it possibly can. Personally, I'm very happy to be working on something that has some values which are a little more, um, I don't know, 1950s perhaps, when, when the world was a little simpler. And, they, and um, I think having gone through the Second War, people in Europe certainly were yearning for 
peace and, and for certain moral values which were reasonably absolute. Could they chop or scare you? Oh, I wish animals came to me like they come to you. Dr. Doolittle. <laughs> Luggage, or we'll be unpacking in the dark. Other members of the cast had a chance to relax while the footage was being assembled. <laughs> and few would need to be convinced, after such a long schedule, that this was a real family on and off the screen. In you go. Oh, I need headphones. There is a pair in there. Good luck. Good luck. Right, we'll keep the others in there. With most of the post production completed, and after almost a year of their lives spent working on the Enid Blyton adventure series, the children found themselves in a recording studio working with composer Simon May. Simon wrote all the music for the series and rehearses the children as they record a version of the title song. For these four lucky children, the past year has been an adventure of a lifetime. The excitement as real as that played out on the screen. I know the things they're frightened of. I know the things they hate. Immortal words which Enid Blyton wrote at the very beginning of her brilliant career that was to make her the most widely read children's author of all time. Now the Enid Blyton Adventure Series will introduce her magical world to a whole new generation of audiences and for generations to come. 24 exciting episodes featuring four really likeable kids, a couple of likeable adults, a lot of very amusing villains, uh, a lot of excitement, almost like the old comic thing, a lot of danger, and it all ends happily. <laughs> well, I've got four wonderful children. <laughs> right, quiet, you lot. I've got something I want to say to you. <clears throat> yes, Mum? No more adventures, understood? Yes, Mum. No more adventures. Definitely no more adventures. Not a single one. Wouldn't dream of it. Definitely. Not. <laughs> <laughs> well,